Hey guys, um, so this video is about my time being on staff in Scientology in the Dublin Mission and um, I don't think I'll be able to fit everything into this video so I may have to do a part two but I'll just see what I get through anyway. Um, so I had been spending a lot of time at the mission, like doing auditing courses and whatnot and my ethics officer approached me and asked me would I like to be on staff and I thought this was really cool, you know, like a really big deal to be asked to be on staff so I said yes and I started on staff on my first evening and um, first of all I just want to make the point that at the time I wasn't doing this for the money because I already had a job and I wanted to volunteer on staff because I thought it would really be helping but they did tell me that I would get paid for my time because I put in a lot of time on staff like even after I finished work I'd go into the Dublin mission and work there as well so I mean they did tell me that I would be paid for my time on staff which is, is really funny it. Anyway, um, I did get paid, but I'll, I'll come to that in a second. So, um, uh, basically, I had to do a lot, lots of different things, you know, like cleaning the pictures of L. Ron Hubbard and cleaning the course room and calling people up and trying to get them in, you know, to part with their hard-end dollars and whatnot, euros. And, um, yeah, so it was kind of fun at first because I was given kind of different jobs to do, and I thought, oh, this is really fun. And um, one particular time, there was a big, you know, dissemination program going down and you know we basically had to try and get in as many new members as we could so I had to go from like door to door posting leaflets in, in I mean thousands of leaflets for Dianetics and Scientology like it took me over two days to post them all because I just kept getting bundles and bundles of leaflets to do oh it took so long and um actually I, as I said in my other videos my my mom hates Scientology but one night it was pouring raining and it was really windy and there was a horrible storm and she felt so sorry for me but she actually drove me around to get out the leaflets in people's doors because I just I had to get it done before 2 o'clock the next day because that's when all the stats go in in, in Scientology before 2 o'clock you know all the stats have to be in 2 p.m. so she felt so sorry for me she, she drove me around in the rain while I gave out my little leaflets and stuff um, so I got it done anyway and um as well as the, the leaflet duty, I had also been, you know, making phone calls and I'd been doing a lot of cleaning in, in there as well. Like I said, the pictures of Aaron Hubbard and the statues, everything has to be kind of cleaned around. And um, so I'd kind of been staying late to stay for a whole week or so, so that I could get everything done. Because, you know, the birthday game, we had to win, you know, be up to that and all that kind of thing. And so after doing all this, I was told I was going to get paid. And like I said, I wasn't doing it for the money because at the time I, you know, it was something that I loved to do. So anyway, the night came when I was going to get paid and I was out cleaning probably copies of Dianetics, I don't know, but I was in the mission cleaning anyway. And one of my fellow Scientologists at the time came up and said to me, here's your paycheck. So I, I opened it and, and it was a two euro coin, two, two euro. Um, that's like the equivalent of two dollars, I guess you could say. And I was kind of like, oh, yay, this is great, thank you. You know, but like I said, I wasn't doing it for the money. But, you know, after all the effort I put in, I thought we would all probably get a bit more than that. But with my two euro, I did get my bus fare home that night from the mission back to my house. So it did pay for my bus fare. So um, at least that was kind of handy, you know, that was kind of helpful. And, um, yeah, so I just kept on... Uh, up the time. I just kept on um, doing all that, you know, phone, phone, making phone calls and doing what I had been doing. And um, there was a, another thing I wanted to mention was um, while I was working on staff, I was also asked to try and recruit as many of my friends in as possible. And like I've already covered in my other videos, my friends don't like Scientology. But my best friend, she's, she's, she was very tolerant of Scientology because like she's my best friend and she's always supportive of everything I do. So she was really on board with me. Like I mean, she, she wasn't a Scientologist herself, but she supported me because, you know, she's my best friend and she thought, it, you know, I was happy at the time. But I remember one night, um, I, I stayed behind late because I was, you know, doing them, like, cleaning and stuff like that. And um, I was told, um, Suzanne had, my best, well, my best friend, she had come into the mission with me a few times to pick me up if we were going out to say, and I remember one time, uh, w one of the auditors came up to me and asked me, was my friend interested in Scientology or in auditing? 
And I said, to be honest, no, like she, she, does, she doesn't really, she's not into it, but she's supporting me, but she doesn't really want to do it. And I was quite shocked at the time. What he told me to do, he said, she's your best friend. And I said, yes. And he said, so I assume you know all her weaknesses and all her buttons that can be pressed. And I said, well, yeah, you know, obviously I know what, what she's insecure about and, you know, what she likes and what she doesn't like. And he said, well, is she insecure about relationships or that kind of thing? And I was like, well, you know. And he basically said to me, you know, I think you should break your friend down. And I was like, what do you mean? I wasn't really following at first. And he said, look, we're trying to get as many new people in as we can. And without this sounding horrible, he said, if you could kind of take your friend out for, for the night and kind of tap into her insecurities, like, and press all her buttons and make her realise that she needs some auditing and that she needs Scientology. He said, it would be helping us out, but it would also be helping her out in the long run because, you know, she would have Scientology and, and all the tech and blah, blah, blah. So he basically asked me to go manipulate my friend and push all her buttons, you know, find her weak spots. And, you know, I was... But I didn't know what to say. I was like, I, I, I told him that I didn't think I could do that. And he just said, you know, in the long run, it will be great for you and for her and for us, for, the, you know, the, the mission. So um, I didn't, needless to say, I didn't do that. And I was out with her that night. And she she was still really supportive of, of me and Scientology and everything. So I, I couldn't, I felt so bad. I, I mean, she did come in for auditing. But that was when I was... Um, on staff tr then also training to be an auditor that's a different story um my time training and then when i did become a dynamic auditor but that that's a different story um but yeah I, I thought it was very shocking how he asked me to manipulate my best friend and you know press all her buttons to make her feel so insecure and i mean that's something i could never do because i love her to bits and you know that that didn't sit right with me since that night and you know i kind of pushed it to the back of my mind as we all do, for things that we don't want to accept, but I knew as well that that wasn't quite right, and that's not something that I could have done. Um, another thing I also noticed that whenever I would be on staff, and we would have a list of people who had previously come in to do services or auditing, now these people might come back, like these people's phone numbers could be about two years old, but we still have to ring them and hound them. And um, I just think it, an interesting point to make is that whenever I would be making phone calls out to people, you know, saying, hey, do you want to come in for some services? Do you want to come back for another book or whatever? I was told not to use the word Scientology. Like, if I was ringing, if, if I was calling people, I'd have to be like, oh, hey, this is Gabrielle from Dianetics. So they actually told me not to use the word Scientology because I guess they know what what bad press goes with the word Scientology, which is kind of funny because if, if, if it's something so positive and if it's really helping people, they really... You know, they made it a point for me not to use the word Scientology. And I remember I was on the phone to this woman one time. And I was like, you know, hello, this is Gabrielle from Dianetics and Scientology. And the minute I said the word Scientology, she, she said, wait a minute, is that that Tom Cruise thing? And I was like, uh, no. And I didn't really know what to say. And I, I told her, well, I'm ringing, I'm calling you about Dianetics. But, you know, you don't have to be involved with Scientology. And she goes, no, I don't want anything to do with Scientology. And I hung up the phone. And my ethics, well, she hung up the phone, sorry. And my ethics officer had heard this, and she, she said, Gabrielle, don't use the word Scientology when, when you're calling people, you know, trying to recruit people. Um, which is kind of funny, because, like I said, it's, it's something that's supposed to be so wonderful and help people. And, yeah, I know it's whenever I use the word Scientology over a phone, and people would get freaked out and hang up. So that should have been a warning sign. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, I'm kind of nearly out of time, because... I know it's 15 minutes on YouTube, but my camcorder thingy only allows me to upload 10 minutes. So I'm probably just going to end this here, because I'm at 9 minutes now, I think. So I will make a part 2 about this, because there's loads more fun staff stories to tell. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, cool. Thank you for watching.